All right, so tell me, have you ever been in a meeting and you're trying to argue with somebody and they say, hey, you can't do that. That's like comparing apples and oranges, trying to win the argument right there. And then you just look at them and you say, what the f All right, I know you didn't say it, but I know you thought it. Today's design principle is comparisons, where we are gonna compare apples with oranges. Today on Thought Stack. Apples and oranges. Alright, you've been comparing things your entire life, but simply put, a comparison is a method in which you're trying to understand information in the system. Now, this is only done if you can look at certain variables in a controlled manner. So what's a variable? Simply put, if we stick to our uh, apples and oranges, a variable could be the color, could be the texture of the skin, the weight, even what they're grown on. They're both grown on trees. So that's a variable. This is where it gets tricky because it's how you measure the variable that matters. Therefore, when we're pulling in data from say the apple and orange, we're using our senses, right? We're looking for color, we're looking using our eyes for sight, we're looking for weight, we're looking our strength. But this is where issues can arise because say I'm colorblind and you're not, I'm going to see colors very differently than you. Or say that I don't lift weights and you do, these things can feel a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter. Therefore, it's important that we understand what tool we're using to measure to then make accurate comparisons. So since there's a lot of discrepancy and subjectivity between you and me, that's why it's so nice to have things like our smartphones or computers in general for measuring different variables. For example, the phone camera, great for determining what color something is. And the fact that you have a, a different phone than I do, but there can be a standard protocol that can help still match a color when I'm here in LA and you take a picture of an apple somewhere else in the world and make an accurate comparison between those two variables, that's very powerful. Versus saying like, hey, I have a red apple in my hand, which you can clearly see that it's not, and you say that you have a red apple, well, we have no clue if that's really the same red between the two apples. We already got past what is a comparison, what is a variable, and how to measure a variable. The last step is how do we present the information in a way that's easy for us to understand. Now this is where things can get tricky as well, because if you've read the book, How to Lie with Statistics, you can see that people can get very confused based on how something is displayed. If you want to see how not to compare things from a visual standpoint, definitely check out the site viz.wtf. Let's go through a couple examples to show you what I mean. This one right here with this LinkedIn ad, they're trying to compare facial expression and body language to tone and voice. And as you can see, the percentages say 55% to 38%, but that pie chart, that's an egregious, bad representation of these percentages. Here's another good example. Participants were asked, what's harder to give up, salt or sugar? When you look at this, the pie chart says 55% say it's harder to give up sugar and 45% say it's harder to give up salt. But visually, it looks like salt was harder to give up because the graph is wrong, and that bright blue color highlights your attention to salt more than the sugar. All right, here's a good example of presenting data in a way that furthers somebody's agenda, right? This is from Microsoft. They're trying to compare their Microsoft Edge speed to Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. As you can see, the percent differences between the speed of them are not that far apart, but the visualization, we're using these gauges, it makes it seem like Microsoft's Edge is just leading the pack, when in reality, it's not the case. So going back to our little conversation where that person threw out at you, hey, you can't do that, it's like comparing apples and oranges. Well, this actually happened one too many times to NASA scientist Scott, who said, you know what? You can't use that argument on me anymore. I'm going to prove it to you that that argument is bunk. So what did he do? Well, what any good scientist would do is he would take an apple and an orange, standard apple and orange that you find at a store, and he dried them, pulverized them, and put them through a mass spectrometer. And you know what he found out? That an apple and an orange are more similar than they are different. So therefore, if somebody ever says to you in an argument, when you have a very good point to get across, and they wanted to shut you down by pairing it to some arbitrary apples and oranges, you can say, well, an apple and orange is actually very similar, and therefore my argument stands. How do you like them apples? All right, Thought Stackers, I hope you enjoyed that design principle on comparison. 
If you've ever been in an argument and somebody threw that apples and oranges idiom at you, definitely let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already done so, please smash that like button and subscribe. But until next time, stay thoughtful.